goggles. Safety helmet. Rope. Pack of biscuits. Corner drill. Unbreakable blast screen. They're all made from plastics. A truly phenomenal group of materials. They're so versatile and moldable that they've come to feature in just about every aspect of our lives. And all these things were essentially made from crude oil. But although we make almost all our plastics from crude oil, it's not the only stuff we can make plastic from. Well, the very first plastics were made from natural materials before we moved into petrochemicals. And now a great deal of research is going back into these bioplastics. Now, to show you the essence of the process, I thought I'd try and make plastic from the most humble of biomaterials, the potato. It is the starch in the potato cells that will become the building blocks for my plastic. Starch is the white substance left on your knife after cutting potatoes, and the best way to extract it en masse is chopping, grating and mashing. With the potato all mashed and broken up there, a lot of its starch has been washed out into the water. So now I need to remove the potatoes. So I know I've got starch in there, what I need to do is wait for it to gradually settle itself to the bottom. A quick bit of siphoning later and I'm left with my raw ingredient. That is the beginnings of potato plastic. Now, plastics are made from polymers, but not all polymers make good plastics. In potato starch there are two types of polymers. There are kind of long straight ones that can all lie next to each other, forming little bonds. Whereas the other lot are kind of odd shaped ones that get in the way of everything. So I need to get rid of the odd shaped ones and I get rid of them with acid. A quite a light acid called vinegar. Now for a spot of cooking. I'm gonna follow this recipe. So first up, my spoon of starch. That is mixed with water, my acidic white wine vinegar, food colouring and a baking product called glycerine, which acts as a plasticizer. Without this, starch would form a plastic that is hard but brittle. And I've decided I want a flexible sheet. So I add the glycerine, whose molecules lie between the starch polymers and allow them to flex over one another. See, that's thickening up a treat. You can see it's changed completely. Now what I need to do is, is leave that to set, leave it to cool, the water to evaporate out of it, and then I can make what I like from it. After a day left drying, the plastic is ready to use. This one's particularly good. There's some real strength to it, and it's got that flexibility that you want. Potato starch is widely used to make biodegradable plastic bags. And other biological sources like sugarcane, straw and cotton are being used to make a whole range of other household items. Now, my bioplastic manufacturing skills may not be at a level where I can shave, write or eat my dinner with it, but it's given me a unique opportunity to see the world through the eyes of a potato.